In this week's Africa Today, we'll be examining why the U.S. is accusing Eritrea of working to destabilize the Horn of Africa. The U.N. Security Council has imposed sanctions and accused Eritrea of providing arms to rebels in Somalia. Eritrea responded to the imposition of sanctions by leaving the African Union. This week's show examines what lies at the heart of the current sanctions. We'll have points of view from both sides of the political divide, plus a view from the ground in Eritrea itself. Africa Today is asking, is the UN's justification for placing sanctions valid? Sanctions were imposed by the UN Security Council on Eritrea for what the UN believed was its support for backing Islamist insurgents in Somalia. The resolution imposes arms embargo, travel bans and asset freezes on businesses and individuals. The Eritrean government has consistently denied the allegations which was backed by 13 votes to 15. After the sanctions were imposed, Eritrea suspended its membership of the African Union in objection at the call for sanctions last year. The resolution demanded the country seizes arming, training and equipping armed groups and their members including Al-Shabaab. Eritrea now becomes one of the first countries to be subjected to UN sanctions since they were imposed on Iran in 2006. In response to the resolution, the Eritrean ambassador to the UN, Araya Desta, in a letter to the council, slammed the decision as ludicrous punitive measures. He feared that sanctions will cause Ethiopia to be trigger happy, which will create a cycle of conflict in the region. In support of their government, Eritreans living abroad recently went on a mass demonstration in Geneva to voice their opposition to the UN's decision to place sanctions on the country. In this week's Africa Today, we ask, is the UN's justification for placing sanctions on Eritrea valid? Hello and welcome to Africa Today with me, Vuiswan Mubongwana. The Eritrean ambassador to the UK, Tesfa Mikhail Geratu, recently stated that the real reason for the UN sanctions is Eritrea's consistent opposition to US-led interventions in Somalia, Sudan and the rest of the African continent. Joining me today are Director of the Human Rights Organization, Release Eritrea, Salam Kidane. On my right is one of the key organizers of that Geneva demonstration against the UN sanctions, Mr. Sirak Balbi. And on the phone from Asmara in Eritrea is independent journalist and historian Thomas C. Mountain. Welcome to all of you. Thank you so much for joining us. I'd like to start with you, um, Silam. Now, these sanctions were imposed on December 23rd. Um, so, from your understanding, you know, we've heard the basis that the uh, UN Security uh, Council uh, has given, but uh, do you feel that uh, any evidence was given to support their justification? The problem that we have is the utter um, secrecy that the government of Eritrea operates in. There is no form of independence, uh, independent uh, scrutiny or on the Eritrean government. This is a government that enters into deals and agreements with anybody that it likes. There is absolutely no form of scrutiny. The, the assembly, uh, effectively the parliament, hasn't met since 2002. So it's very difficult to say uh, what uh, level of evidencing went one way or the other. As an Eritrean, I should be able to um, scrutinize what my government effectively has presented in, in, in essentially my defense and the defense of my people. In the 12 months leading up to December, uh, the government of Eritrea wrote about nine letters to the UN, and these are publicly available. In none, in any, none of these letters attest to any form of um, engagement. The government of Eritrea repeated repeatedly um, accused um, the US, the UN, uh, everybody else, the AU, uh, over everything. And the government well, okay. of Eritrea also refused a fact-finding mission let, into let the border conflict. Let me interrupt you for a second and speak to someone in Eritrea. Um, Thomas C. Mountain, could you, could you uh, respond to what you've just heard there from Salam with regards to uh, the secretive nature of the Eritrean government? Well, let's start with some basic uh, research and, and, and evidence. The UN General Assembly commissioned a special committee on Somalia to investigate these charges, and they appointed 
Dumasani Kumalo, the South African ambassador to the UN, to um, in, lead this investigation, compile a report, and report back to the General Assembly, which he did. He conducted a very thorough investigation and recently reported back to the United Nations General Assembly that, yes, arms trafficking was taking place in Somalia, but the arms trafficking was car being carried out by Ethiopia, not by Eritrea. Ethiopia and the African Union soldiers stationed in, in Somalia are responsible, according to the report, for at least 80% of the arms in Somalia. The report in no way implicated the Eritreans in arms trafficking or supporting terrorists in Somalia. Now, that's the evidence in support of Eritrea. Okay. What's the evidence what? in opposition to Eritrea? Mm -hmm. Well, we're going, we're going to continue um, on, on that theme, but I'd like to, uh, to, to bring you in on the discussion, Sirak. I mean, Tesfa Mikhail Geratu, the UK ambassador to um, Eritrea, has continuously and consistently said 100% Eritrea has never given arms to any insurgents within Somalia. How do you respond uh, to what you've heard from Salam with regard to the secrecy and lack of cooperation from the Eritrean government? Well, <clears throat> the accusation is leveled against Eritrea, and um, the people who ask to, provi to provide evidence is not Eritrea. It's the people who are accusing Eritrea has to provide this evidence. And we've been constantly asking this evidence to be provided to show the world that where is this? I mean, the United States uh, Army and the French Army are actually situated in the Red Sea. They are in between uh, Eritrea and Somalia. They can easily detect and find out that this is the evidence as we've seen these uh, military arms go in and they're, you're arming the Al-Shabaab. But there hasn't been a single. We've actually had a uh, meeting with uh, UK foreign office official who's one of the, uh, one of the countries who's been pushing for the sanctions. And uh, uh, they said that uh, we have an evidence after, after this, the, what Thomas was actually just mentioning, mm -hmm. uh, that was found full of holes. And once we asked the, the officials in the uh, foreign office, they said that we have evidence, but we're not going to show anybody. We're going to keep it secret. But um, this is like it's becoming now uh, kind of a joke because um, it's very easy to just show these are the days, these are the armies, and these are the, the days that we have, you've provided uh, Al Shabaab. Mm -hmm. And Eritrea, in contrary, has been trying to play a positive role in the uh, stabilizing and uh, peaceful resolution and mm -hmm. having a reconstituted Somalia. Somalia has been uh, facing a long standing um, situation without any uh, official government over there. Yes.